Alrighty, working on a 2007 Volvo XC70. Um, it's got a, if you look in the instrument clutch, it's got an anti-skid service required. And then which is right there. And then right there is your triangle telling you something's wrong, exclamation point. And then here's your other triangle, exclamation point. So it focuses here, anti-skid disabled. So we're doing a full system scan. Um, I already kind of know what's wrong with it. What I believe is wrong is the steering angle sensor. There's a steering angle sensor. They call it SAS, steering angle sensor. Behind the steering wheel, it's the clock spring, it's the airbag, it's all this whole assembly. It's anywhere from like 300 to like 500, even as much as 700 bucks uh, from Volvo. So they have a steering angle sensor in here. They have a yaw sensor in the vehicle. And it's got ABS. So when you're going down the road, say you're in a skid, so you're driving on the highway and say you hit some ice and you're going, you're at a 30 degree skid, but your steering wheel straight. The yaw sensor says you're at 30 degrees. It's gonna hit, you know, maybe the front left, right rear brake to straighten you out. But if it doesn't read steering angle sensor, it's not, it's gonna disable the whole system, obviously, because if it doesn't know where it's at, it could cause other issues. So I did a full system scan with the Octel. There's one in the ABS, one cold, and two in the steering angle sensor module. So when I go to report here, if you look here, ABS, well, let's go to this one first. The steering angle sensor module, steering wheel angle sensor internal fault, steering wheel angle sensor internal fault. There's your two specific codes, permanent fault, and then your ABS module. Communication between the control units, communication problem with SAS steering angle sensor internal fault. Why is the ABS not a fault? Because it's gathering data from the steering angle sensor module and it needs that data, obviously, to apply the brakes when needed. So there's the issues right there, right? So if you go back, look at my Ryan diagram here from Volvo. So 791, or actually just go to this one right here, which is 3254. Let me actually look this up for you. I got these cheat sheets here because they don't tell you on these cars. You have to go off their index, which they would write it in their diagrams, but they don't do that. So 3254 is right there. 3254 steering wheel module. So that's the steering wheel module 468. The other part is your steering wheel angle sensor module, which is part of the steering wheel module. Where are we at? Right there. And then you got this is your uh, 18.4 and 791. You pull up that one, 18.4 first. Actually, I don't have 18.4 on me, but what 18.4 is, find it here. They call 184 the uh, contact reel is 184. That's your basically in, in the US vehicles we call it the clock spring, but they call it the contact reel Volvo. And then 791 is actually your steering angle sensor. So if you look here, 791 steering angle sensor. So what's going on is this steering angle sensor and the contact wheel is losing connection. It's not a separate serviceable part separate serviceable part it's all in one part there right there's your dynamic stability track traction control our anti-skid volvo calls it the dsctc there's your can high can low lines and then your power free red wire and then your ground going down the 3184 so more than likely it's the steering angle sensor in the mod or in the steering wheel behind it not too bad of a job to get to but I do want to show you the definition of the code right here. It says, so we had a, you know, 000F, which is what we had in the scan tool over here, if you remember when I looked. But the steering wheel angle sensor is located in the lever module together with the steering wheel module is supplied with power by it. The steering wheel angle sensor is installed on the underside of the contact reel, which we call it the clock spring on American vehicles, and together they create a replaceable unit. So you have to replace the whole thing. A cold wheel, like an encoder wheel, right? Reluctor wheel, is mounted inside the steering wheel angle sensor, which follows the movements of the steering wheel 
There's nine optical sensors, did nine optical digital sensors, and two analog photodiodes to read off the cold wheel. I believe one of these or a few of these sensors are going bad. Well, these signals are compared and must create a specific pattern. The diagnostic trouble code is stored if the signal pattern created does not correspond. This DTC can be diagnosed when the ignition is on, switch is on the switch, and the switch on, and the steering wheel angle sensor is initiated. Initiation is carried out when the steering wheel is turned more than four and a half degrees, so it does a safe self-test, basically. So that's what's going on with that. Now I'm gonna pull up some live data, but before I do that, I'm gonna show you something else. So right here, there's the contact wheel. Contact reel. Depending on what model car you have, obviously, but it's the same thing inside the steering wheel. Um, your clock spring, your airbag connectors, it's all in one unit, but the steering angle sensor is part of that. So they just show the same thing, the steering angle sensor. It's just on the back side of that, right? Just part of it, but you have to replace the whole assembly. All right, so now, if we go to the steering angle sensor here, you pull this up and pull up some live data. Well, if you look right there, the top and supply voltage to the module, that's your alternator battery voltage. And look, steering angle velocity, it's not moving right now. I'm not moving the steering wheel, right? And it says the velocity is, what, 300 degrees per second, it says. Well, it's not, it should be zero because I'm not moving it. It says it's going left and it says it's 516 degrees. Well, it's not. Um, and the battery voltage for that module is the same thing as the other one, obviously. But, uh, so it's stuck there. That's why it's throwing a follow code. Well, if I turn the wheel, and I'm turning the wheel now, it should move on there. The velocity should move this one, it should move this one. I'm turning the wheel again. Nothing, right? That ain't doing that. So let me go back. Clear these codes, because I cleared them and I made it fall out again. There's your two codes, right? Yeah, hit the wrong button. Let's see if it cleared these codes out. Let me go back to the ABS one as well. That's the communication one. All right, clear that one. That's the communication one. Three, see, still having an issue there. Hang on one sec. Alrighty, I reset the car, I turned the car off, and then I turned key on engine off, reset the code. So now, car's running again, no fault codes. System's a complete pass, right? We only care about those two modules though. The uh, steering angle sensor and the ABS. So now we're gonna go back to the steering angle sensor, SAS, no codes, system pass. I'm gonna pull up live data, right? So steering angle velocity and those two right there, zero, right? Well, if I turn it, Look at the velocity, it moves because I'm moving a steering wheel. It's gonna move. And then your angle of your steering wheel is there. Reading, right? So now we're gonna graph this guy because everything's reading perfectly fine now. What I noticed though, I go positive negative 360 to make it easier on our eyes. There's your steering angle. You can see it moving there. When I drive this, if I turn all the way to the left or all the way to the right, that's when it faults out. It doesn't fault out in between. So that tells me one of those optical sensors or those diode sensors or photodiodes is going bad. So if you watch the screen there, I'm turning obviously to get out on the road. See, driving here. Go back to that. No light on the dash. We're good to go. I'm not making aggressive turns yet. No, that graph's gonna move up and down, obviously. So I'm gonna turn left here, but I'm not going hard left. So there's your angle there, soups over. I gotta go left again. 
go left again. Swoops over. Now let's go up here and go to the right. Go to the right. Swoops over. Going back to the left. Let's go to the right. Swoops over. The left. Swoops over. Right. Everything's reading fine. Sorry about my camera work here. But I'm going to make a hard left. I'm going to go all the way to the left, and that's when it faulted all earlier for me. And it got stuck. Make sure there's no cars coming. So I'm going left. I'm all the way to the left there. And I'm turning back to the right. Look, I went all the way to the left, and it's stuck at 493.5 degrees. I'm turning back to the, it ain't coming back down. It's stuck up there. So let me stop, go back to the dash. Look what's back on, anti-skid, boom, warning, Stabilitrack, or they call it, you know, anti-skid. So then you go back, stuck at 493.5 degrees. Go back, the three trouble codes. Probably gonna have two trouble codes in here now, at least one, and then the other 001 will come eventually. Steering angle sensor internal fault just through. And then I would imagine, if not yet, maybe later we'll have an ABS code now. Yeah, right there, communication. So obviously, I wanted to go all the way to the left. I'm gonna try it all the way to the right here, but the problem is, so I got to do the same thing, reset it all, and go to the, to the right. But I believe it's one of those photo diodes, those optical diode sensors that are going out. So it needs this new steering angle sensor. But let me clear the data, and we'll go from there. All right, I cleared off the codes again. Key on engine off. Everything's back to normal. So as far as this concern, it's working, right? I turn the wheel a little bit. Everything reads again. Let's go back and graph this again. Let's change this. Uh, let's just change it to that so we can see how far it goes. Okay, we're going to drive again. No cars coming. No codes. We're good to go again, right? So I know if we go all the way to the left, it falls out every... That's like the third time I've done it. Once on video, obviously, which you guys just seen. Go to the right a little bit, go to the left a little bit. See those two humps there. So let's make a hard right and see if it does it that way too or if it's just on the left side. Once this car goes by. But still, no codes, no, no stability track or whatever the DSC, TC, whatever the Volvo calls it. Dynamic stability track control. So we're gonna turn right. I'm going to go hard right, and it just came on. Same thing on the right. Stuck at 493.5. Lights are back on, all three of them. So what it needs is a new uh, steering angle wheel sensor. If I don't go all the way to the right, then it's good to go, or all the way to the left. But I think those photo diodes or optical sensors are bad, so it needs a new steering angle wheel sensor. So now we got to pull one of those in, which is not a too bad of a job to do. Take the steering column apart a little bit, pull off the steering wheel, replace it. But when you're all done, you have to do a relearn procedure on that whole new module which I'll show you where it's at in the scan tool, but you gotta have Volvo software, obviously, to be able to do that. So let me put this in park. Still stuck at 493.5. And we go back. So to do that relearn, you gotta to go to the ABS module, special function. We're using the Volvo software. We can see, go to special function. You got to read that, you know, keys, position means zero off, blah, 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 right? I already know all that. So go back here. Calibration for only vehicles with dynamic stability traction control. 
that that one just tells you what you're going to do your all your sensors we're not going to calibrate it right now we're going to escape out of it but if you go in here your steering angle calibration so please select an activation operate so we do the steering angle calibration you hit start go through it but we're not doing that now because we uh we got to get a new steering angle sensor and replace it and then we'll go from there so that is it for this video so I did a recalibration with the old sensor. Obviously, that's not going to fix it, but uh, I would imagine it would. You turn it 15 degrees to the left and to the right, it tells you through the directions. So I did the steering angle calibration. It's completed. Let's just drive around again and see what happens, but I'm sure it's still going to need the angle sensor. So we go back to steering angle sensor. Live data, everything's reading fine, All right? Let's graph it. We'll just do an auto graph. All right. No lights on in the dash. We're good. So if you drive, you know, not all the way to the left or all the way to the right turning, it doesn't fall down until you make a hard turn to the left or to the right. Obviously, because one of those optical sensors or photo dials is not reading. Everything's good there. Let's make a hard right. All the way to the bump stop. Boom. Faulted out. Stuck at. What's it show? 490.5. Look up here, all three lights on again. Obviously, every calibration is not going to fix the issue. It needs a new steering angle sensor. So we'll go ahead and put one in, order one, put one in. I'm going to do a couple wire checks, make sure the wiring going too looks good. But that checker there just proved that the wire is good because uh, if the wire was good, it would do it randomly at other spots. Or if the wire was bad, I mean, it would do it randomly at other spots. It's only when you hit the end stops because of those photo uh, optical sensors or photo diodes going on in there. So I'll put a new one in, remove and replace it, and then calibrate it, and that'll fix this car.